there, we're backstage at Gallagher Blue Dorn, and we have a special, uh, special episode of our Sound Insights series. We've got uh, a couple guest artists here with us. It's not often we all are in the same place at the same time, so we're gonna have a little conversation about what to expect coming up here on our April concert, which is of course uh, the evolution of African American music, and this is a, a culmination of a year-long residency that we've been doing with. Bruce Henry, it's been a really exciting project to work on. Um, been out in the schools, youth concerts, and now this performance. So, um, Bruce, you know, just turn it right over to it. You know, we, we have this whole thing going on, this big expansive thing going on this year, but I'm not sure everybody in the community has had a chance to meet you musically, so to speak. So, kind of give us some background, you know, for somebody who, who doesn't know much about you. Uh, what are the essential facts that we need to know? I am a singer of song. Singers. That's it. I am a singer of song. No, um, I've been singing. This is actually my fiftieth year wow. in showbiz this year, July twenty fifth will mark the fiftieth anniversary. So, in the course of the, you can imagine fifty years, I could fill up the entire interview with experiences that I've had. But I'm an eclectic vocalist. I have had uh, a lot of experiences in jazz, singing from avant garde jazz with Julius Hemphill to singing with Bobby Lee Farron to to Frank Sinatra, et cetera, et cetera. I love jazz and I write jazz music. So that's taken me all over the world. Five different continents, uh, performed with a million different people. It's incredible. And, and also, you know, doing the thing of singing jingles. I, I like to share with the young folks because they're, they're impressed by that <laughs> more than the five <laughs> continents that I've seen. I did that commercial, that one commercial. Remember that one? The kids are like, whoa. Yeah, so, so, you know, over the years I've done a lot of, lot of recording of, of, of national jingle programs, literally all over the world on some commercials and recordings, and, and a band leader for decades, I was a band leader, I operated uh, mostly out of Chicago and in Minneapolis. Wow, cool, so you've been here in the Midwest this whole time, now we finally get you out with our symphony orchestra here. Yes, and one of my first gigs was in Waterloo, oh, I hate these years, but anyway. Uh, you don't have to say what you're <laughs> No, I say it, I say it with pride. One of my first gigs was in Waterloo in 1975. Unreal. With a, a soul band. Wow. Mm -hmm. So your so you're back is kind of like a full circle here. I, I can't get away from Waterloo. <laughs> well, I'm glad, I'm glad we're doing this. You know, Rich Freeber, who is our former executive director, he really had a lot of passion for this project. He knew you and was interested in pulling it together. So he, he kind of laid the groundwork for this whole thing. Um, you know, I've been around for, for most of this, but um, just kind of recap a little bit what, what it's been like this year. I mean, we've, we've been talking about this now for at least a year, maybe more, um, in, in terms of the planning phase, but, but the stuff you've been doing here in Waterloo and Cedar Falls, what all has that added up to? What that has added up to, it comes out of a curriculum I wrote. So while I was having a jazz career singing, I was simultaneously working on musicology, African-American musicology, because I love history as much as I love music. So while I was performing, I was studying, going to school, my degree is in history and African-American history. Um, and so I developed a curriculum. It was based out of my training. I, I studied classical music early on. And, and during the classical music experience, I was like, okay, this is all wonderful and beautiful. This does not explain what I'm hearing mm -hmm. on the west side of Chicago. That stuff is real, it exists. So all kinds of musical traditions and vocal traditions that weren't there. So my, my curiosity was peaked at a very early age. This whole history journey started when I was about seven. Oh, it was incredible. Okay. So, um, and so I started researching, discovering, it led me to first create a vocal curriculum that was based on the African American experience, and then a the, uh, humanities curriculum. So there are many different different uh, out aspects of that that I, that I perform. One of those is a school wide residency, and so this this is my favorite way to do it because when I do the, a school wide residency, the idea is to teach the children the story, the four hundred year history of African American music with the background in Africa. We take them through the changes, history, changes of music. We take them through that in the humanities course, and then it culminates with them performing on stage a timeline of those different styles. So the most successful residencies, like we did at Central, the most successful residencies are when I'm not on stage at all. <laughs> That's when I've done my job. 
They tell the story, they're the narrators, and they perform. Yeah. So that's what we did at Central, and we had um, even more, you know, there's so much to this, because in the African experience of presenting music, music was multimedia by nature. It was holistic by nature. So if you can get English departments involved, which we did there, we had the art, art department involved, rather, there, and they did some beautiful backdrops for us. So it was a wonderful, wonderful experience there. That's fantastic. You know, you say you get the kids up there on stage and you're, you know, you're successful if you're not out there. Right. But I notice when you're around students that they're just, they're kind of magnetized, you know, that I see their, their mouths are kind of agape, you know, and they're like, who is this guy? You know, and, <laughs> and you know, we have the, the residency central, also the youth concerts. And I know, you know, coming out of the youth concerts, kids are going, can we get the poster autographed, yeah. you know, by Bruce? Um, talk a little bit about that piece of it too when you're a performer as well because with Central you know obviously workshop through stuff with kids and you know getting them figuring out where their interest area is what they want to perform but the flip side of that is we've also had had opportunities where you've been performing in front of kids and that's a sort of a little bit of a different dynamic too well I love performing I'm an introvert, except when I'm on stage. <laughs> I would never know you were an introvert, because <laughs> I've only been on stage with you. <laughs> except when I get to say, I love that. That's that's my gift. Is I love and I love telling stories. I love encouraging people who say they don't like history or hate history. It's to me, it's about storytelling, and so I love doing that. And I always have the trump card that. It always sing. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, it's just to enhance the history story. So I, I really love that. And of all the ways that I present the evolution in orchestra, I've done it in jazz clubs, jazz concerts, ensembles, etc. All the ways. I like just walking in there by myself. Yeah. No offense to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no offense to all of like us. 60 of us. I'm grateful. <laughs> really, seriously. It's just another way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I'm very accustomed to doing it, doing that time night telling the story and singing a song myself. Yeah, it's interesting because this whole project that stretches throughout the year with Central and the youth concerts mm -hmm. and the April concert, um, it's kind of taking the evolution project that you created and, mm -hmm. and sort of massaging it, twisting it a little bit, fitting it to this new frame and bringing in talent from here, you know, yes. and, and, you know, just talking about the whole singing thing and, and being a performer, I mean, Felicia, we've got you performing, you are like one of the performers who lights up the area here, <laughs> and is this the first time you're singing with the symphony? First time with the symphony. Is. Tell me about it. What's that feeling like? You know, I remember symphony concerts when I was in elementary school at West High School. Oh, yeah, so of course. So, yeah. symphony used to play during our school day and we all go to West High yeah. and there'd be a show that night. But I also remember being six years old and seeing Kathleen Battle oh. walk out in front of an orchestra yeah. in this canary yellow gown. Yeah. And it was the first time I had seen a black woman sure. in front of an orchestra and the conductor looked to her and it was her breath that started this entire yeah. Day. Absolutely. Sound. And I remember looking at my mother and being like, we had voice lessons with Les Hale the next day. Mm. But I didn't want to be an opera singer necessarily. I'm a big girl, so of course my vocal teacher was like, all of this win. But I was a stage kid and I danced and I tap danced. I had a family that loved the, the arts and, was, and I was blessed to be exposed to it young. My grandmother had known a lot of famous jazz musicians, a lot of them, wow. and she was a great s singer. She, my favorite film was S Stormy Weather. Oh, yeah. I love it. But I was like the only kid that knew what Stormy <laughs> right. Weather was. Yeah. That Nicholas Brothers dance was my, <laughs> my life, and I would watch that, and The Wiz, those were my two, and I was in that, traveling show young the too yeah, yes yeah. and so That's i'm a, a stage one. kid but i'm a waterloo girl mm -hmm. and so performing with the waterloo symphony at gallagher blue door that's one of those life checks mm -hmm. as i was sitting here listening to 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 you talk i kind of got a little te teary-eyed thinking my grandmother would be completely blown away right now yeah and we lost her to covid but when she had dementia really bad and she was getting ready to go, 
throw in all of these big band songs because they sing with the big band. I know because of her and my time with her. And so I was singing to her and I'm trying to get her together in her eyes, she can't see well. And I'm going, miss the Saturday day. Do, 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 do. And she's kind of out of it, but she grabs my hand and she starts doing this. And I'm thinking she's just tapping me, but then she does this. She wanted me to speed it up. <laughs> that was the tempo. And once I got that tempo up, she, she squeezed my hand and rested back. But I was like, you know, she didn't even know herself at that point. She didn't know who she was. No, she connected with that. But she connected with the music. And so being able to even sing that, this show, it's like everything connected, right? I'm honored to be a part of this. It is a great honor and one of those life checks and to be able to be singing songs that mean something mm -hmm. and that tell a story and that share a piece of who we are yeah. and what an honor for this symphony to recognize that as a thing to invest in do you know what i mean yeah and i i mean i think we're we're um, just feeling so grateful to have the two of you on stage together I'd actually be curious to know you know a lot of this territory that we're talking about on the musical side uh, this stuff that you guys have done on your own for years, you know, with different bands, I mean, sing mm -hmm. with the big bands, sing with the small bands, all over the world, like you were saying. Um, I think, you know, for an average uh, listener, you know, in the, in, the, in the audience, I mean, they may not always realize that we don't just kind of sit together every weekend and make music, we come together. Yeah. Um, maybe each of you could just briefly talk about, you know, the process of putting this together, you know, and pick some music you wanted to do that represents this story. Uh, but also, what is it like to work with an artist, you know, that uh, we met, you know, we talked about the concert, then what's next? What comes next in that process, you know, when you're working together? Well, a couple of things. One is, I did talk about all of the ways that I've been blessed to present this. But I'm thankful for the orchestra because this is the first time I got to do it with the symphony. Is it really? So this is new for me, too. Yeah. Yeah. And to hear, you know, part of my curriculum is the black experience in classical music and to act to hear these songs playing in the context. That that is special. That's fantastic. That's very special for me. So um the jazz thing, that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> it's that's that simple, really right? Said. This yeah. is what we do. Yeah. Once go, we talked, I and we vibe each other out, we were like, oh we'll be fine. <laughs> like whatever I he, he talked. To, to, to me, we talked about music mm -hmm. and some songs, and I got his vibe. Oh, and I did research too, because it checked up well, all got, of his yeah, own got shows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, we'll be fine. <laughs> this is gonna be great. And baby, these dresses. <laughs> Let's talk about how excited well, I am about these dresses. I've been waiting a long time. I've been waiting a long time for these dresses. I had to get a camera shot on this is a lifelong dream so these dresses are going to be putting in work okay you yes. heard it first back, to, <laughs> back back to the conversation the dresses yeah i can't wait to see these dresses i think this is going to be a vibe and i'm really like it's going to be a vibe mm -hmm. and the the part that i'm excited about too is the audience being able to say oh i recognize this Mm -hmm. Or I, I didn't know that this is what this kind of feels like that other side yeah, relate know, to, it to understand way. what is underlying pop music, what's underlying yeah. gospel music, what's underlying country yeah. music, yeah. rock and roll music. You to be able to have the root of yes. that to to provide the soil from and and let people understand this is the nutrients that grew all of these other things yeah. that's what's exciting because a lot of people don't th think about what's under the flowers yeah. do you yeah. know what i mean it's true i mean you you weren't at the youth concerts but something that you said bruce to the kids which i thought like i could see their eyes light up when they heard you say it was you know this this thing that we're taking from african music this is the root yeah. and then this over here the blues or, or jazz music that we're talking about this is the fruit yeah. You know, and that was just such a great way to express that, and the kids, you know, they got it immediately. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like you, I'm, I am completely thrilled that we can tell the story with all this, you know, kaleidoscopic array of music that's all connected to the thread. I mean, that's really due to you and your 
leadership on this project. Well, that means so much to me because I am a history nerd. So <laughs> three things that I have loved in my life is singing, music, singing history, and uh, basketball. But I wasn't as good at basketball. Well, I, mean, <laughs> I like basketball too, but you keep it in there somehow. <laughs> I, I could never make it to the pro level. But so I, I did this branding exercise once. Like I've been, I just started doing the evolution because it was in my heart. Yeah. And, you know, and I told you the many different ways I've done it from preschool to graduate school. Um, and I just, why, why, why do I do this? Why am I just compelled to do this? So I, I would do this branding exercise. Like bring you, get your elevator speeds, get a minute, bring it down to 30 seconds, bring it down yeah. and keep it smaller. And when I get to the end of why they do it, is there's something that's in the music that I think, in the music, the cultural expression of African America that I think could be a benefit to everyone. Mm. When I first wrote, I was thinking about empowering African American youth to, to archive our culture that is appropriated from us. That's them, that's what's been going on forever. Yeah. So, but I kept going. I kept going. There's a message in African music performance that is democracy at its purest and its finest. Inclusion. It empowers the individual to be self-expressed. And that's what I want to encourage everyone, regardless of ethnicity, religion, whatever, that this music creates a community structure where you can be empowered to be you. Yeah. And that's the ultimate. The history, the great migration, all the, all, there's so many levels to enjoy it. They're just aesthetic beauty. I use the Nicholas Brothers every time I go to class. That's it. <laughs> but just aesthetically, you know, if you just took it on a on an aesthetic level, it's, it's a great story. Yeah. But there's a further story. And so for me, it's the empowerment of the individual, which we need because I see so many people who are and the students that I meet of all ages who don't feel free to express themselves. Yeah. Well, I think you help them do that and talking you know, in these presentations about how we have a musical community. I mean, that answers the question I asked before, you know, how do we do this? How does it come together? It's like you're saying, I mean, the essence of it really is about the community piece and the benefit that we all get, as opposed to, you know, it's just a history or, you know, it's just a song. So uh, I think that's inspiring. And I can't thank you enough. And I can't thank you enough, Felicia, for being part of this. We're gonna wrap up our conversation because we want some of the folks who are out there listening to be coming to our pre-concert talk that we're yes. gonna do before the show. Well, I and also want to thank the symphony as a Waterloo girl to provide a person that is oh. a resource, that it's is a, a like to provide this knowledge and this level of experience and passion to our Waterloo school kids, man. Very what an, like, to be able to do like, this. let I, I can't let that go because opportunities for our kids and opportunities for kids to see themselves, but even see excellence in uh, others, oh, that's more than money. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank the symphony for the investment into our kids and into yes. their dreams and into their creative minds because I was at one of um, his his workshops and the influence isn't just for music kids it's for kids that just listen to music which is yeah, all of us every kid everybody like, in the room. every yeah. people think that you got to be a music person and you got to be a no we're all music people everybody right. listens to music right. even if you can't sing or play yeah. Yeah. we're all music people and so I just want to thank you all for it the opportunity for our kids to be exposed to excellence in this way. Well, it's been a great project, and like I said, we're just so glad uh, to be able to work with you, Bruce, yes. and Felicia, of course, featuring you. I mean, this is like what it's all about, you know, the hometown symphony, the hometown girl. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. So thank you both, and just, you know, one more shout out about the show we got coming up here at the end of April, Evolution of African American Music, starring Mr. Bruce Henry, wonderful vocalist, scholar, it, it, educator, so many different things. And everybody around here knows Felicia. If you don't, if you haven't heard her sing, you better be getting out yes. to this concert. Yes. It's going to be pretty incredible. So thanks you guys for doing this, Thank and you. we'll see you all at the show. See you soon. Uh -huh.